a lot of it comes down to making up your mind like i'm going to do this right it's like if you're you know if like your ship capsizes yeah you know four miles from the shore right like you could either like be like you know kind of indecision or be like woe is me the boat sank or you're like you know i guess this is my fate right or you make that decision like no i'm going to make it like i am going to make it i'm going to find a way well welcome to the fight of kc show mr ezzy how are you doing this morning how is your morning going so far oh it's good i can't complain man you know nice and sunny yes yes well thank you for doing this awesome interview uh man i have this season has changed everything so much that pretty much everything we do this is on zoom everything is on the internet um you know i I know you i know that you are a partner at wings cafe um just give people a little bit bio about yourself so they would they know who we have on the show today uh yeah yeah i mean uh just kind of done a little bit of everything you know, was a, uh, a fortunate to be uh, one of the Google N10 fellows, um, you know, have done some international relations uh, fellowships as well, uh, trying to solve hard problems uh, between countries. Um, the uh, most recently with uh, Wings Cafe, we make, you know, great wings and, and, and yes. the artisan wings and flavors. And we're getting ready to debut an immune boosting wing flavor called Smokeberry Herb. Uh, okay. Yeah, and then uh, Vice President at William James Creative, uh, they acquired um, you know our company LV8, uh, and uh, yeah, we are basically just creating uh, um, basically beautiful videos and templates, and basically we're like an outsourced marketing department, so okay. that you know people don't have to hire a graphic designer and a videographer and a content writer and copywriter and a social media specialist. Yeah. Now, how is Wink Cafe doing during the season? What is, uh, what are you guys doing to keep the business running? What is, what is, are you guys still selling uh, wings? What is, what is the plan? Yeah. Yeah. So we're still selling wings. I mean, that's all plus, right? Uh, but I, I think a lot of it has to do with innovation. So, you know, how are, like, we made a, a commitment pretty early on. We're like, yo, we're going to try to fight through, through this. Uh, and so, you know, mainly for, for the team and, and everything like that. And so uh, for us, it became, uh, okay, so how do we do that? And, yes. you know, uh, I think we had to innovate. We had to kind of change our model pretty quickly. Um, and, yeah, really just taking some risks. So, like, you'll see some things coming within the next week and a half that, you know, it's, it's pretty rare to see coming from a Wings restaurant, you know. Yeah, so yeah. You'll see, like, the unique flavors coming out. Like, we have, um, as a sneak peek, we'll, we'll, like, we have the Smokeberry Herb coming out, but then we also okay. have um, we also have a Hot Cheeto flavor that we're getting oh. ready to Wow, to okay. Uh, so that's you exclusive. Have- so that's, that's exclusive. You're in here first. You're in here first, right? <laughs> wow. Okay. So, like, are you guys doing like a, a you know, a drive-through? Uh, you can pick wings on through a drive-through or online orders. How are you guys selling it right now? Since no one can actually come into the uh, restaurant and sit down and eat it wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can they can come in and place an order, pick up an order, um, but they can't just stay, <laughs> you know. And so, yes. uh, really shifting it to online ordering okay. um, has been um, has been important for us. Uh, and then you know, making sure that we kind of you know reconfigure to be able to do more online orders. Yes. So like you run in Wings Cafe and with your art adventures, what are some valuable insights that you know you think? You know, anything will help um, other entrepreneurs out there today or small business owners to be able to succeed in this season? What are some little insights that you might give people to say, you know, this is what is working for me and I think this could work for you too? You know, um, you really kind of have to decide if you're going to survive or not. Mm. I think that a lot of it comes down to making up your mind, like I'm going to do this, right? It's like okay. if you're, you know, if like you're, ship capsizes yeah. you know four miles from the shore right like 
you could either <laughs> like be like you know kind of indecision or be like woe is me the boat sank or you're like you know i guess this is my fate right or you make that decision like no i'm yeah. going to make it like i am going to make it i'm going to find a way and then like all of your actions therein, like your body reacts to that and mm -hmm. and it's like all right well that's what we're going to do you know like then it's up to you you to figure out how you're going to to do that so maybe it's you know you like per you know you're like all right so i remember how i float i'm a float yep i can still float all right cool so i'm going to swim 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 float swim 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 float mm -hmm. for that four miles right and maybe you calculate you know it, it usually takes some calculations like okay so which way is the current taking me which way is the shore was the sun at like will i freeze like is there something on the boat that yes. before it sinks i can grab to make sure i stay warm mm -hmm. let do something like that like are there float floating devices on there like you know, you know all of those things like then become you know uh options for you because you've mm -hmm. decided that you're going to make it and now all of your energy can be spent on figuring out how sure. yeah and like, you know, with everything going on, it's easy for us to just be afraid and just sit and say, man, I don't know what to do. You know, things are going bad. But I feel like there's always some way that people can start making impact and doing something small. And, you know, how do people, how do you think people can shift their mindset from being, you know, a victim in this situation to being proactive in seeing what they can do to get ahead of the game and start moving before you know, even though things are bad, but there's a way you can make a switch and actually start working towards, you know, make an impact. How do you think that switch happens? What do you think people can start doing in the sense of thinking different instead of just being a victim in this situation? You know, I think that it kind of starts with that appreciation of like, okay, so I have my health right now, yes. right? Health is the one thing you can't control. So if you have that, then that's kind of the start of it. And then mm -hmm. it's like, okay, so what um so i have my health i maybe have my job maybe i don't um but like what you know doing like a, an analysis of what you can control in your yes. life and then say and then what skills you have and then like deciding okay so this is what people are still buying or this mm -hmm. is what you know would help out you know society right now and then like really diving into that whether it's content or whether it's doing an ebook on some knowledge you have or you know picking up sewing so that you can sew whatever you know or yes you know whatever it is like you know i think that now's the time to really go all in and developing those skill sets new skill sets you know i picked up i picked up options trading um last yeah. week right just because i'm like all right so now's the time right yeah exactly. there's a lot volatility in the market now it's time to play like I, this is a good time to teach myself uh, this new skill that can you know potentially like provide you know some income and, and help out with this right and so I, I just think that like it's it's figuring out like what you're good at finding things you're passionate about and then really kind of going all in on, on this, you know yeah so i mean on the flip side of all, you know, the chaos, the, you know, the, the news always bringing fear of how many people are infected. What do you think are, you know, the benefits to this? Because, I mean, there are negatives to it, but also positive to it. What do you think are some things that, you know, we can take it, say, you know what, this is bad, but this is something that might be a positive to this thing? Yeah, yeah I think time. Um, so this is a, it gives us time, right? We're no longer yes. commuting to work. We're no longer commuting to meetings, you know, stuff like that. So, I mean, time to me is really valuable if you use it, you know, mm. aggressively, we'll say. Um, and so, you know, for me, like, you know, I think my approach was like, I saw, I'll say this, I saw a lot of people like kind of lean back with their time and like, you know, I think some people have been going nonstop, so they need that time to kind of reset. Yes. But I think there's, there's uh, definitely also an opportunity to really lean into developing those skills. And, and like, if you wanted to learn marketing, learn marketing, right? If you want to figure out how to evolve your business, evolve your business. If you want to figure out how to be a more valuable, like employee, 
yes. you know, or a team member, like do it now, right? Don't just watch Netflix. Like mm. don't just watch Hulu and Disney Plus and stuff like that. Like, yo, you've now you're now on like a twenty four hour schedule, right? So you have control over your twenty four hours. Mm-hmm. And are you like it's like maybe you know maybe you're working like eight of those hours but now you truly have you know let's say the other 16 of those hours yes. that are within your control and so you know you can plan your day accordingly so that you could theoretically devote five hours to eight hours a day learning mm-hmm. new skills and picking up new things like if i really want abs right now like I would do, I would be doing 3000 crunches a day because I can, I could do 300. I could drop down every hour and yes. do 300 crunches if I want to in between meetings, calls, whatever I'm on the call, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, now's the time. Right. And so it goes back to like, you know, are you going to be like, Oh man, like we suck right now. Like this is a terrible yeah. time in life. Or are you going to be like, yo, I'm going to attack my goals now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go after what I've always wanted, but have always said I don't have the time to do now. The the only last thing I'd say on that is at the same time, like you asked about like, you know, like standing out. I think this is the time to do it. Like this is like a hard reset. And so, you know, like right now, Yes, seniority, you know, still matters in a lot of like corporations and stuff like that. But this is the like, you know, it, the, it, like you get respect when you do things that people aren't willing to do, and when you take risks, people aren't really willing to to take, or you work yeah. harder than people are usually willing to work. And so now, like, if you're like on the like lower end of the spectrum in terms of seniority and stuff Mm. like right now if you're busting your tail to figure out how to do white papers for the company how to do like come up with plans for you know coronavirus response for the company like Mm. here's here's some new avenues we can take when 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 everything opens or maybe now that everything's closed and everybody's at home here's some marketing techniques we can use here's some new video ideas we can do and you take those ideas and you run it past people who have that you know knowledge within the company to weigh in on your idea so you're able to refine those ideas or refine those reports or refine those new revenue opportunities and and, and inform them then you're able to to present um you know some past to to the company being great or differentiating or surviving in the marketplace or or whatever that you know the seniors will look at and be like why didn't our people who know our systems better do this right like it's like like what you know we have this junior person over here busting their tail Mm -hmm. busting their tail to figure out how to make us some more money so we can come out of this then you're looking at everyone else like what'd you do like They were yeah. able to do all this, and even though it's it's wrong, or like maybe even though like they don't know that much, so it's not that helpful. Like they will respect the heck out of the the fact that you tried yeah. when no one else is trying, and that means more than anything else because they know that when the stuff hits the fan, that you're going to be there trying to figure things out, and you're not just going to freak out or lay down. And that's a great leadership. Um, trait that you want on your team and you want to elevate those people who think like that. Wow. That's, that's, that's huge tips right there. Now, just going to a little bit to the news side of things. I've seen a lot of articles about, you know, how the black community in Kansas city is being affected more during this COVID-19. Like people are getting infected. I think it's 50% of Kansas city uh, infections are from black neighborhoods and 30% of Kansas city is black people. Now, what do you what do you think of that? What do you think is the is the the cause of all all that? Like, is it is it just happening now, or something has been leading up to this? I think this is a big issue for you know a city like Kansas City, where we have just thirty percent of black people, but fifty percent are affected. You know, what do you what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I I kind of could see it coming, um, just because like you have you know, of the, like, you know, you have people who can stay at home because they have yeah. jobs that allow them to stay at home. You have people who don't. And if you look at the people, you know, the percentage of, you know, jobs where you have to come in or you have less control over whether you come in or don't come in, like it, mm. it tends to lean a certain way. But I think the biggest thing is, is not that like, you know, 
everyone's not getting it, you know, it's that, or has gotten it. Uh, I think it's that, you know, the virus thrives on people with chronic problems like high blood pressure, um, you know, asthma, things like that. And so, you know, you know, of course, like heart issues. And if you leave, if you lead a life that is more stressful, you're more likely to have, you know, some of those heart issues. If you um, d don't have a grocery store close to where you live, you're more likely to have grown up on or around like you know, fairly unhealthy foods. Mm. And then you're more likely to have cholesterol issues or, you know, like, you know, high blood pressure because of all the salts and stuff like that. Yeah. And so I think it's more of a, it's more of like, you know, if the virus gets through everyone, uh, but they don't know it because we don't have testing, <laughs> then mm. like you're going to know it with the people who have these chronic conditions that um, allows the virus to thrive, you know, or, or at least like it makes it harder to, it makes it harder on your body when you do get it, you know? And so yeah. I think that's a little bit more of what we're, of what we're seeing. Then. I think that also there was an initial, um, lack of understanding of the uh how the virus travels uh, for yeah i think that you know from a leadership perspective it would have been great for us as a country mm. to um have our leaders focus on you know prevention and, yeah. and in the face of just like um, making people feel like everything's okay mm. and so i think it's, it's kind of like one of those things where sometimes it's better to be honest up front and deal with it versus like trying to cover things up. And you see the same thing in businesses, right? Like pretending like you don't have financial issues, like yeah. only work, it, it, it works until you're out of business. Yeah. You know, and I think that that's kind of what we're seeing where, you know, they didn't want the public to be, you know, freaked out. Um, by the fact that, you know, studies coming out of uh, China were showing that the virus could stay airborne for up to three hours, right? And depending on how it's injected into the air, right? right. And so it makes people feel better to, and it, it, it avoids mass like panic. If you're like, no, there's no need for masks and stuff like that, but it doesn't do anybody favors mm -hmm. because like, or um, like less sprawled out cities like in New York or like, you know, um, other other places you you know if people don't know that then they're going in the same elevator that someone yeah. could have had it in and someone in that elevator you know could have burped for example and now that virus is in the aerosol form instead of the the um instead of attached to saliva and so it's just hanging up there instead of just like going on to like you know buttons or side or wherever it goes floating mm -hmm. down you know so like you almost like hurt people's chances of protecting themselves by not giving them the truth. And I think we see that in New Orleans and other places. Yeah. What is, uh, so this is for my, my second to last question. What is one advice you want to give to, you know, young entrepreneurs or business owners out there, um, you know, who are going through this with everyone else? What do you want to tell them um, just to encourage them to keep pushing? Yeah. I mean, um, I think there's a lot of great companies out there who faced almost a certain death from a company perspective and they pivoted and they're now very successful. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, you, you think of Google, <laughs> like early days they pivoted. Yeah. Uh, you know, Mozilla, um, Twitch, uh, Pinterest. Uh, you know what I mean? Like all of these names, like it's not so much about like what life throws at you because life's always going to throw things at you, but it's how you pivot out and around them, right? You know, there's a, a company called Get Green Resources. Uh, they're making, you know, um, FFP3 masks, uh, which is N99 equivalent, uh, you know, because, you know, N95s are only designed to stop 0.3 mm -hmm. microns and the, uh, and the virus is 0.125 micron. And mm -hmm. so the N95s, you know, are, are, are better than nothing, but, you know, it's not something I'd want to be stuck with <laughs> if I'm around people, you know? Uh, and so like they're making these out of, you know, out of, um, you know, uh, South Overland Park, you know, of, uh, Kansas City, Kansas. And, um, you know, they, they, there was one point where they hit, you know, like what could be show stopping, um, you know, problems 
you know, literally every day, you know, and every day they had to pivot around it, figure out a solution and then go about it. And it's so much easier to just give up or say, oh, woe is me and have a pity party than it is to figure out how you're going to, to move through it, especially if you're a fairly lean kind of company and you don't have responsibility for a bunch of people and their families and lives and pensions and things like that. So if yeah. it's just, you know, you the people and you guys can stay agile, like, you know, I mean, there's, it's, it's easier to, to have pity on yourself, but it's a lot harder to figure out the path forward. And that's what separates people who, you know, are going to ultimately be successful, whatever they're going to do, whether it's, you know, in corporate or entrepreneurship or whatever, and everyone else is, okay, so you've taken the body blow, you've taken that blow. Now, mm -hmm. are you able to think about what comes next and how you're okay. going to react? You know, there's a, um, there's a, uh, you know, the, the captain of USA Boxing, Cam F. Awesome, you know, we, we had a convo where he was like, you know what, like, I don't understand why people shut their eyes when they're getting hit, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I was like, ah, you know, I understand, you know what I mean? Because like, I'm afraid my eyes going to get like scratched up and pop out or something, you yeah. know? And, so, but like I got what he was saying like his point was that you know if you're not seeing where the blows are coming from and you're not still continuing to think about okay what's next okay he hit me with the left now he's gonna hit me with the right like because you can't it's hard to hit with two lefts like that like two mm -hmm. you can't do two left haymakers you mm -hmm. know like it takes some time you gotta wind back yeah. up and go back right yeah. you know instead like if there's a left coming the if there's a, a left, I just use my right hand too so but like we'll pretend <laughs> like if there's a left coming right and you can at least have your eyes open long enough to see that so that you're getting hit with the left hand then yeah, you know yeah. a right hand's coming and you can kind of block or prepare for it mm. but if you just close your eyes and you don't know which hand hit you then you just have like you're not like that's almost certainly going to end pretty terribly for you you know yeah. so that was kind of the point he was making so I mean that's kind of how I feel about it. Yeah. So like, what is? Wow, that's that was awesome. What is what is uh, one thing you want to do when this is all over? What is one thing you want to do uh, when we're all over this and we're on the other side of things? Man, you know, I, I think I think uh, you know playing tennis, man. You know, I I played in uh, I played I played a lot when I was uh, in junior high and uh, some in high school. But that's something that is just like, it's one of those things that you like start thinking about, what do I miss the most? Yeah. You know, even though I didn't do it before, like, you know, like, what do I wish I could do? And, uh, and like, I thought about it. I was like, jog, no, nah, no, nah, not interested. Uh, you know, walk a dog, no, nah, dog cool. Uh, I was like, yeah, I like ice cream, nah, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like, yo, playing tennis like that's something that like just brings yeah. joy and stuff. Man, that's awesome! Wow. Well, thank you for bringing out this time to you know come on the show and talk with me during this season while we're all you know quarantined and trying to stay safe and stay healthy. Um, is there a website where people can go and get you know Wings Cafe online, or if they want to get some cool wings, some hot wings, some you know some of that spicy stuff you got going on, what is the link for people to go get it on? Or is there, is there a promo code or anything they can use to get some, some, you know, some good wings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you don't have Postmates, download Postmates and use the, there's a code. I think it's like, I think it's pretty available, widely available, but yeah. you get a hundred dollars of free delivery with Postmates. If you use that code, just make sure you use the code. We're on, uh, you know, you can grab us on there. Uh, wing, thewingscafe.com. Okay. It was a great okay. way to find this. Instagram is at Wings Cafe. Okay. And then, um, you know, Lily and James Creative for marketing. Uh, anything like you know, if you want to outsource the entire marketing department on the cheap, then, you know, Lily and James Creative. And you can Sweet. find me there around. Sweet. Awesome. Sweet. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day and stay safe. I'll see you, see you on the other side when this is all over. We'll meet up and get this rolling. Thank you again, and have a wonderful day. Stay fired up. Thanks, man. Thanks. Take care. Thanks for having me. Here, Q. This is John Owen. And uh, follow Fired Up KC on Instagram, Twitter, Snap, TikTok, if you can do that. Fired Up KC.